YouTube, welcome. This is video number two in my hydraulic head and energy uh, series. Video one explained the very basic con concept of hydraulic head. Uh, we used a pipe for that example and explained the different types of energy contained within the body of water um, inside of a pipe. So watch that video first uh, before watching this video. It'll be in the comment section. Uh, if you've seen that video, you can just continue forward, and if you don't care about video one and just want to see what this is about, I'm not going to stop you from watching this either. So let's just, let's go for it. So you see before you the hydraulic head equation, which I've explained in video one. And so what I'm going to do is take this head equation and kind of relate it to energy. And we'll, I'll also explain why we represent hydraulic head in terms of length instead of energy. Okay, so by now, if you've watched my other videos, you should be fairly familiar with this equation. Um, this is head, the total head, equals the elevation head, plus the velocity head, plus the pressure head. And so let's go through this equation, and I'm going to compare it to some other concepts you may have learned in physics or engineering. So Z is our elevation head. Now what does that remind you of in maybe your physics 1 or 2 class? Z is like the potential energy, right? If you have a slug of water or a bucket of water and you're about to drop it down a pipe that's angled down to the ground, that water has energy, right? It's, it's above the ground and gravity is going to act on it. It's going to flow towards the ground in that pipe because gravity is acting on it. And what does that kind of remind you of? It kind of reminds you of potential energy, right? Say if you were to hold a bowling ball 10 feet in the air, that bowling ball has potential energy because when you drop it, it's going to move. Therefore, it has potential energy stored with it just by being above some datum, you know, above the ground where gravity can act on it. So Z, let's call that potential energy, okay? And what is our equation for potential energy with everything else in physics? It's M mass times gravity times height right? So there you go. It's just potential energy of a body of water. Now let's go to this term. This is the velocity head, right? And what does that remind you of? It's kinetic energy, right? The train is going certain miles per hour. It has kinetic energy because it's moving, right? And what do we know kinetic energy as usually? One half times the mass times the velocity squared, right? This last one doesn't look too familiar, at least to my eyes, so I'm just going to kind of explain it. But the pressure head, the pressure head, let's call it Fe, because we've already used Pe. And the pressure energy of a body of water is just that. It's the pressure exerted by that water against something. So say you were to hold your hand against a hose while that hose is running, you know, you'd be building up a lot of pressure behind your hand because that water is trying to get out and it's, it's building pressure beneath your hand. So that will equal the pressure of that water or body or whatever times the volume. So in the example with the hose, once you stop up that hose with your hand, you know, pressure is going to be exerted on that hose volume, on the volume of that hose. So it's the pressure of that water times the volume of whatever it happens to be in or happens to be acting on, okay? So let me go through these terms and kind of rewrite them. Let's do a couple substitutions, okay? So mass times gravity, what do we know that as? Well, let's go back to our F equals MA. The force equals the mass times acceleration. And what is the acceleration when you're holding something above the ground? It's gravity, right? Because you're holding it up above the ground and the acceleration will be from gravity. And let's also make another substitution here. Let's force is the same thing as weight, right? Pounds are a unit of force, right? And they're also unit of, we call weight. So it's the same thing. So let's just call it W instead of F. So we'll say W equals M times G. Our force, our weight equals the mass times the gravity. So let's go ahead and substitute that in here for this guy and say that weight times height and let's go ahead and say Z instead of H because it's the same thing, right? So weight times a height will equal the potential energy of a body of water, okay? Now let's look at this guy here. 
If we go back to this guy here and rearrange it and say that weight over gravity equals mass, right? Just rearranging that term and substitute it in here, what will we end up with? Well, we've got one half times when we substitute m in or wg in for m, we end up with w weight over gravity, and then we still got our velocity term in there. So velocity squared. So for our last term here, I want to remind you what gamma uh, equals. So gamma equals the specific weight of a fluid. And the specific weight is the weight of a given fluid over a unit volume. So for instance, water is, I believe, 9.79 kilonewtons per one cubic meter. So it's a, it's a weight of a specific uh, fluid over a unit volume, okay? And let's rearrange this term and say that volume equals weight over, over the specific weight, okay? We're just rearranging this term. And let's go ahead and substitute it into here. And so this becomes pressure times weight over gamma, or our specific weight. And so let's look at this equation in terms of energy. Okay, so we've changed these head terms, which sometimes don't make much sense, into energy terms, which I think make a lot more sense. Because if you're thinking about a body of water, it has potential energy in elevation, it has kinetic energy if it's moving, um, and it has pressure energy if it's exerting pressure on a, on a volume. These are all forms of energy. We've just taken this equation and we're going to transform it into energy. And then I'm going to tie it back into our original head equation. And then it all makes sense why we use units of length instead of energy for in hydraulics, okay? So let's say, let's call it energy now instead of head. So energy equals our weight times our height plus our velocity, our, our kinetic energy there, right? So that would be our weight times our velocity squared over 2g, just dropping that one out of there, and then our pressure energy, which would be pressure times the weight over the specific weight, okay? Okay, I'm going to get rid of all of this to make some room, and I'll show you why we use the head equation instead of the energy equation. Let me bring this up here, and it's a very simple reason. And we use the head equation instead of this energy equation because in fluid mechanics and hydraulics it's more convenient to think of energy in terms of head and you can basically classify head as the amount of energy per unit weight of the fluid and if we just let w equal that unit weight we can just divide w out of each of these terms we're just we're reclassifying the energy equation that we made in terms of energy per unit weight and we're letting w equal our unit weight and dividing it out and so what we do is just divide out each of these terms by w, by weight. Okay, we just get rid of it. So that'll be 1 over weight, 1 over weight there. And when we divide out weight, we get our head equation, right? Z plus V squared over 2G plus P over gamma, with a specific weight. Hopefully this video makes you a little more familiar with these terms and how they relate to energy, uh, how head relates to energy. Uh, if you haven't seen video one, I'd go watch that now. Hopefully you've seen it already. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. And if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. Uh, there'll be a lot more hydraulics videos and, and groundwater videos and all sorts of stuff. So check it out and we'll see you in the next video.